Hello, everyone. Welcome to First Track Deck webinar. Uh, today, I'll present you everything that you need to know to start using Track Deck straight away for your projects. We will start from uh, just uh, explaining how to quickly install Track Deck either as a browser extension to your browser or JavaScript install uh, to your um, website. Uh, please, at any, at any point, feel free to use uh, Q&A uh, to ask questions uh, and give me uh, any tips or comments. And we're going to go through a couple of use cases of our clients uh, and, uh, and also show you all the features in Track Deck. All right. I'll just give it one second for the internet to boot. All right, so I guess we can just start right now. <clears throat> so as you can see, I have already uh, installed Track Deck and enabled on our Track Deck landing page. Uh, it's really simple to install Track Deck. Um, if, uh, let's say, you just registered and you go to Track Deck uh, website, to app, uh, you can uh, go from uh, tasks dashboard to settings, go to installation, and then either install a JavaScript snippet to your website or choose a browser extension to install. So as you can see, I have already installed my browser extension. I can go to any website online and add it as a new project to Track Deck um, similar to what I have done, for example, right here with TechCrunch. Um, it's really easy to do this. Um, as you can see, it's, we, can have, we have a toolbar. I can move it around, hide it, and hide it, uh, mark uh, comments in TechCrunch, who I certainly don't have access uh, to their code. It's really easy to leave a feedback and here we have a snapshot of the area that I marked that I want to leave feedback about. We have our my comments, we have a technical details, so screen resolution, operating system, and browser version. And that it's assigned to me. If I would have more people uh, in this project, I could reassign it, I could delete the task, I could mark it as favorite or mark it as done. And of course I can go to dashboard to manage it, manage it also. Let's, so if you would go to any other website where you don't have Dragdeck project created yet, uh, you could go, for example, to Swift overview for Apple developers, and let's add this website for a review in Dragdeck. So if once you click uh, on browser extension, you get the pop-up where you choose to which project you want to add this website or create a new one. So we'll create a new one for Swift. And it's done. You have a new project for Swift website and you can start marking, marking uh, feedback and leaving comments to it. So this is, this is the best for, uh, for using inside a team. Uh, it's really quick to invite people. So let's say you come to a new website, start a new project. It's really easy to add people just directly from uh, the toolbar. Once you clicked on project sharing settings, you can enter your colleague's email right here. So we'll just add info at .com, and he will get a invitation to join this project and he will, he can start leaving feedback in a newly create, created project on this website straight away. Alternatively, you can share a public sharing link, which we will come back a bit later on. Uh, and this is for users who are not signed in into Track Deck and want to review feedback left. So this is, this is great if you uh, come across a new website and you need to show something to your client or your teammate who is maybe not in, track, in specific Track Deck project, uh, you can create a new project. Uh, quickly uh, drop him his uh, copy past this link and he will he will be able to see our comments on specific uh, parts of the design 
Right. So this is uh, how invitation uh, for a new track deck project looks. Um, you always will see the creator of a project in the email. So you can make sure that you're uh, being invited to the, by a person you know uh, to uh, the correct project. So for example, this invitation is for track deck uh, landing and blog review. Right. Let's see. Let's go back now to track deck landing page. Um, so once you have more tasks created in the landing page, uh, what's above a really useful uh, thing in, in track deck toolbar is filtering options, especially if you have multiple um, teammates responsible for different tasks. Sometimes this gets a bit hectic, especially if you, let's say, get like 50 or even hundreds of uh, feedback from your website visitors or teammates. Um, so you can easily filter uh, these tasks according to person responsible for it. So for example, uh, tasks that only uh, are assigned to me uh, or other way around created by me. So you can see there is no tasks created by me right now here, too. but there is uh, free tasks assigned to me and I can filter them out and find them very quickly uh, using the toolbar. So let's say, let's go to mobile phone. Oh, that's clearly some spam, some, someone left this. Uh, so what you can do uh, in this case is just quickly uh, permanently delete it uh, because clearly this is spam and just getting in our way. Uh, let's go to another feedback point. So someone anonymous uh, website user was just testing track deck on track on our website and I can review his technical details. So he was on Windows operating system eight, not updated yet, uh, on uh, Chrome browser 38, also not the latest edition. Uh, and I can just see that uh, this person was just simply testing webs uh, our uh, feedback tool uh, and also there is no relevant information in it right here. So I can do, safely delete this. And here we come to some feedback from uh, another anonymous user who, well, I guess really liked our website. And again, I can see his technical details and it looks like it was the same uh, person. And there is more uh, features coming up soon for this anonymous feedback. Um, uh, that we're reviewing right now. Uh, anonymous feedback is left the other part, uh, our feature of track deck, it's anonymous uh, feedback button. We have it here in our landing page and quite a few of our uh, customers use it also. So let's go to one of our customers in West Lithuania, which is a government agency that is using uh, our tool for newly designed website builders. And they also are using this uh, nifty little pop-up to attract more attention to uh, to our uh, feedback button so more people would uh, leave feedback on their website. Um, so let's just turn this off and try this out. And as you can see, anonymous feedback for website visitors has less options. So I'm not, I'm not part of the uh, Inless Lithuania project. Um, so I can only leave a comment. Uh, Type something in, uh, uh, there is email option uh, available. So let's just enter that and I'm done. And it's just really useful to use with clients uh, who don't want to sign in or use uh, uh, browser extensions. It's really quick. Just you can enable it really quickly in uh, track the project set settings specifically for each website um, and uh, just drop a link then to your website. So in this case, just in West Lithuania and people will be able to leave feedback. So once it's done, once it's left, it goes to administrating team and uh, the person responsible for the project will, will get notified in both in track deck and, and by email that there is a new task in the system, a new feedback point. Uh, and he'll be able to review exactly the same way as you would have um, a track deck installed and uh, and ready and um, once you have your uh, toolbar open. 
uh, like this. Um, to turn on anonymous feedback uh, button, you just need to go again back to the dashboard and um, go to settings, and then you go to anonymous uh, feedback tab. And in anonymous feedback, you just turn on, uh, you can turn on or turn off uh, the uh, anonymous feedback button, select the location for it. So the recommendation is to have it in the uh, bottom right corner. Um, if you want, you can change the text right here. You can change the color of a button. Um, you can require or not require an email. And you can use custom element ID for the button. So let's say if you don't want to have um, you know, uh, the button in, in the landing page, uh, you can only enable it for certain parts of a website. Um, and there's more details about anonymous feedback button here. Uh, so here we have two main options how to leave uh, feedback. Uh, but Tragdick is not only for websites or website prototypes. Uh, it's also for images. So let's go to some uh, and see uh, feedback um, for images options. Uh, so here you can see that I have opened uh, my image feedback gallery. Quite a few images here. Um, I have uh, ordered, I can reorder these images easily. This is very useful because currently we have um, a, a, uh, option uh, once you open an image for leaving feedback, uh, you can easily navigate through the gallery uh, back and forward uh, by clicking on this arrow, or you can you just use arrow keys on your keyboard. Uh, and it's pretty useful if you're doing uh, multiple revisions of the same image and you quickly want to go uh, back and forward uh, and just make sure uh, you know that you're on the right image. You can always look at a tab. You will see the name of the image right here first. So, and the leaving feedback in images works exactly the same way as in a website. Firstly, you have a toolbar where you can select uh, some place in the website, even the most specific little uh, thing that you want to point out, uh, and leave your feedback. And then you can assign it to your colleague. You can again mark it as priority or, or mark it as done. Uh, if you want to share this image quickly with a client, again, or a teammate or uh, another person who's helping you out of this image, uh, you can simply share this URL. So just copy it, uh, open private browsing, for example, so I'm not logged in. And once you open it up, again, you can see uh, the leave feedback button. So even if I'm not signed in, I'll be able to quickly mark and leave feedback in the same fashion, just with uh, less options that can get in my, my way. And that's uh, image, image feedback options. So let's see if we have any questions so far from Q&A. Right, no questions guy, yet, guys. So uh, please uh, feel free to just click on Q&A on the left uh, uh, side of your Google Hangout uh, toolbar and, uh, and, and drop me a question if you have any. Now let's go back to image feedback um, gallery and options. So uh, once you have uploaded your images and you can literally upload any kind of files and uh, any number of files straight away. Uh, once you have uploaded them, uh, you can, re uh, once you have ordered, reordered them also in a way that you want, uh, you can also set the settings uh, for the images. So you, you need to click on this little icon in the top of the image, and then you can select the background color of, uh, uh, for the image. Uh, just in case you want to point at more contrast um, around the image to point out some things or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, you can auto stretch uh, horizontally. What happens is you, once this option is enabled, 
um, track in 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 the image we will cut off uh, we will cut up and copy uh, one pixel from uh, uh, left side of your image and then we will multiply it on both sides so it will stretch the image and it will look like an actual website uh, we can take we can take a smaller image uh, so you could see uh, what would mean how it would look or here we have a great example no let's let's take another one smaller one so, all right uh, no this is pretty large also so let's let's use this image and we can also center the image so let's uh, auto stretch it and center it in the middle and open the image all right yeah so you can see that the image was centered in the middle but it's still too large to see the benefits of uh auto stretch but maybe we can just make it smaller all right this will work so here you can see how it looks when it's not auto centered and uh, this goes sweet. And here you can see what, how it looks once it's auto centered. So you can see that the white um, side of the image was multiplied on both sides. And if you want to uh, mimic a real website, it's uh, pretty useful uh, just for quick sharing and, and, and uh, prototyping. So <clears throat> these are our uh, settings uh, for images and image feedback. And there's a lot more coming up. Um, we're going to have better uh, grouping and uh, reordering options soon. Uh, there's going to be more options in actual uh, image workspace and so on. Uh, so now let's go back to settings and go through the rest of setup uh, of a project. Um, once you have, uh, once you start a project, maybe later on you want to change your name. So you can do that in websites in the project uh, tab under the settings. Just click here and change the name. You can add as as many URLs to the project as you want. Uh, so local host, uh, uh, wildcards, everything should work fine. And you can read more about it here uh, and yeah just type in any website that you want to add <clears throat> track that checks it if that's uh, a valid url and you can uh, mark it as https or uh, http and add it uh, to track that. and then you can easily remove uh, uh, url from a project in the same manner so this is uh, really useful when you want to organize in a right way according to your workflow, uh, the projects you're working on. You can have uh, multiple projects uh, for different kind of websites and this way you can manage which information is seen by whom. Firstly, by simply adding people to the right project and adding the right URLs that you want to share feedback about uh, the right people. Uh, so once we start talking about users, we can go to users and roles and see the rest of the options. So here you can see all the people invited for track the landing page uh, and block feedback. Uh, and you see that uh, we have three types of accounts. So we have administrator, and administrators see and manage all the settings uh, and everything, all the tasks that are available in the project. Contributors can only um, can only see that uh, the task we don't have access to the settings for example deleting projects integrations um, anonymous feedback button installation etc and then reporter and that's probably the most useful for clients or someone who's outside your team uh, because the reporters see only only their task or tasks assigned to them and they will be not able to um, uh, to access settings of course so and then you can easily remove people uh, and if you want to add back uh, someone who you previously removed, you can always go to uh, remove users list and just click add and they will get a, another in, um, invitation to get back to project. 
uh, inviting people to projects is really easy. Uh, you have a straightforward email invitation. You just type in uh, email into this link, <clears throat> and then you would click uh, send. Or you can use invitation link. And that's really useful if you have a big team, a lot of people working on the same project. You can just copy this uh, link and send it by email, drop it in chat, in Skype, uh, whatever you like. Um, once everyone is, has joined the project, you just click Refresh button right here, and it generates a new URL. So once the new URL is generated, the old one becomes invalid. Once you have all the people in your project, you can also set the default uh, project manager, if you will, a, a person responsible for the project who will be getting all the notifications, and we will be a default assignee for uh, tasks that are not assigned to, set, to anyone. So you can see that I am the default assignee for tasks in this project. Uh, and I'm getting all the not notifications about anonymous feedback or any other tasks and, and feedback left by uh, my teammates. Uh, notification settings I can manage in, well, in settings in your notifications. Uh, and we have uh, notifications for all tasks. And, I can, and, we, and then we have daily, uh, monthly, and weekly reports that uh, send you a list in an email of all the tasks that were added in that period of time. And you can enable or disable them uh, right here. Um, besides that, of course, we have uh, multiple integrations available. Uh, we have most of uh, uh, very popular project manager systems and more coming up. So we have Atlassian Jira, uh, we have Redmine, Pivotal Tracker, Trello, Asana, uh, Basecamp for project management, uh, and then HipChat, Slack, and Flowdoc for chats. Uh, for customer support, we have Intercom, uh, StartHQ for uh, searching your, uh, your cloud apps, and then zap your custom integrations. Uh, so if you're missing an integration, of course, firstly, you should request us a new integration, but uh, sometimes it takes a while to get them through our pipeline. So what you can do is you can start using Zapier custom integration straight away, and it will be uh, it will be uh, one side integration. It will be sending tasks from TrackDeck to your chosen uh, project manager system or whatever else you can integrate uh, uh, Zapier to. Regarding other integrations, uh, they're all two side server integrations. So tasks uh, being sent, for example, to Jira. Uh, once you integrate, uh, and then if you comment as to Injira, uh, the comments are being synced in TrackDeck also. And you can also sync uh, uh, users in, in, from uh, Jira project or Basecamp project or any, any other to TrackDeck project and vice versa in some instances. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and set up a new account in, in one of the uh, in one of these, uh, one of these integrations, uh, let's go for Basecamp. And I'll just go for standard, standard uh, Basecamp um, inter um, account on trial. Um, Oops, we have been using this apparently already, uh, this email already. So let's just try another one. All right, so once my uh, base camp is set up, I can start the integration straight away. Let's just go back to uh, base camp, uh, to track deck, to base camp integration panel and enable integration. I'll need to sign in again to Basecamp. Oh, internet problems, just give me a second. Oops, and something wrong.
yay. And here you see, finally, I managed to enter my password and email correctly. And now I can sync the base camp. And all I need to do is just click on the green button to allow access uh, from Track Deck to uh, Basecamp account. And the uh, integration is enabled. Uh, once it's enabled, I can select the project. So right now, in, in, in Basecamp, I have only one project. Uh, let's go back to Basecamp and create a new one. Let's call this one testing. Basecamp integration, and I start the project, and um, I'll just go straight to to-do list, and I'll give this uh, to-do list a name. And once this is all done, I'll just go um, back to Track Deck to see if we can uh, see the new project and the new to-do list. I'll just refresh the page. And you can see that my Basecamp integration is already refreshing. Right, and you can see my new project. So I'll just select the new project and I'll select uh, the newly created to-do list. Uh, and I do want, let's say, to import users from Track Deck to a big Basecamp um, project and I'll start um, the data synchronization. Now what it will do is it will send all my available uh, tasks in the project to, uh, to Basecamp. So you can see that I have 12 tasks open in, uh, in, ba uh, in Track Deck. So let's go to Basecamp and see how it's going. All right, and you can see that most of the tasks have been already synced. So let's just go and check out one of them. So what we have here is someone who was testing Track Deck previously and left us some anonymous feedback. Uh, and we can see uh, the part they marked in, in a website. Uh, we have the URL, and that's URL to our uh, track decoration version. Uh, we have a screenshot URL, which can open up, and then again, we can leave feedback for it if we need to. Um, we have the technical details, and then we have, of course, a link to uh, track the cap. So this way, you have all the data that you have in Track Deck will be synced to your current projects in Basecamp. Uh, the screenshots, the signees, uh, the URLs where the feedback was left, the technical details, and the comments. So let's test out the comment syncing with Basecamp. And this may take a second to sync between the comments. So just let's just uh, leave this uh, for a minute and let me go and check if there is any questions. All right, no questions yet. Uh, guys, don't be shy. Uh, shoot away your questions. Whatever you're having problems with, uh, uh, I will be able to help you right now. All right, let's go back to Basecamp and check if it has synced already. So, yeah, comments uh, sometimes take a bit longer to, to sync. So, uh, you know, give it, just give it a few minutes and it will be synced. Let's go back to settings and uh, track deck just to finish the tour. So once you have your integrations set up uh, for project management, again, you can uh, set it up for, um, uh, for one of the uh, chat systems. And uh, we're using Slack. Uh, for ourselves, and it's really useful to get a notification straight away for uh, all the dedicated people in one set in, in one chat from uh, from a user with all the technical details and comment and, uh, and screenshots of a problem, uh, so you can discuss it straight away and decide who's responsible for it, resign it, and so on. And then we have client side integration with Intercom. And this you can see in Track Deck app already because we're using Intercom for uh, our as our CRM uh, and talking to customers. So what once you click on leaving feedback for Track Deck and on a new message, <clears throat> you can see you can attach a file, or you can do is just mark a screenshot using our uh, client side integration with Intercom. 
So if you click on a button, again, you have a simple UI of simply marking any place in a, uh, in a website. I can move this around. And let's say, let's take a screenshot of Intercom logo. Uh, I mark it down, and here I have a URL, which will lead to a separate page, um, which will le uh, lead to a separate page uh, with problem screenshot, uh, technical details, and users' details right here. It's really, really easy to review it, and it's also added as a new task in, uh, in a project. And then you can add additional comment if you want to, and send it off. And very similar uh, functions will be able for uh, very soon for Zendesk and a couple other um, uh, customer support and CRM systems. So if you're interested in something like this, uh, just let, it, let us know. It's actually pretty easy uh, to start using it. So here we have, we were done basically of our integrations. So please review them here and let us know if you're missing something uh, that you would really like to use. Um, but besides that, that's kind of it for the settings. Um, now we can just go on uh, quickly through uh, your uh, personal settings. And that's really straightforward, uh, but just a couple interesting things here. Uh, firstly, I really recommend to add a personal image. It just makes it so easier to separate between uh, people um, when you're assigning a task and that extra second every time, uh, you know, you sum it up and it really starts helping out. Uh, what you can also do is you can enable white labeling uh, on uh, on a bigger plan in track deck and white labeling allows you to upload your own logo instead of track decks in in the app and use uh, your web agency or, or company name so once you enable it you can upload the logo uh, and all other details uh, so track deck is already available in uh, English, Russian, uh, Deutsch, French, uh, Lithuanian, and Spanish. Uh, we have more languages coming up, uh, including German um, and others. Uh, and also, if you would like to uh, localization in, uh, in some language, also let us know. It takes time, but we do add them in the pipeline. Um, and uh, we really try to make track deck as easy and comfortable to use as possible. And then again, it, this here is pretty straightforward. It's an uh, option to change your password. It's um, we also have a help section where we cover uh, more technical uh, questions about the app. So how to configure track deck if you need some specific things, uh, how to use dashboard features, how to install track deck if you're having problems or you can find some extension. Uh, all our integrations are covered here. So if you uh, struggle some, with something like, for example, Jira integration uh, setup, you can just go here and read all about it and what possible uh, uh, solutions you may have to certain, uh, certain issues, uh, the setting different, different statuses in Jira and so on. Uh, so I really recommend to check this out if you have any any problems uh, or in general if you just want to know how to use uh, um, track deck better. Um, besides uh, the help desk, we also are working very actively on our blog and we do have uh, uh, quite a few uh, advice uh, uh, posts in it and we have started a new section called weekly design inspiration where we're posting uh, every week, uh, a selection of designers, uh, UX specialists, or just uh, compilations of some uh, nice art artwork and illustrations. Please check it out. Leave us feedback, what you think about it. All right. <clears throat> so now let's go back to track deck, and we have uh, different, as you can see, I have all these different projects here. And uh, my limit in uh, this specific account is 15, uh, 15 projects. So that uh, brings us to the pricing and billing options. And again, guys, if you have any questions, just let me know. 
So pri our pricing is really straightforward. You either uh, go for monthly or annual subscription. If you choose annual subscription and pay yearly, uh, we provide you a 15% discount. Um, and it's really pretty straightforward. You can see it right here. Uh, what's the discount and how much you'll be paying either monthly or, or annually. And then you see our three main plans uh, and how many projects are available. And that's the main uh, thing, how we separate these plans. Uh, as you can see, we don't limit uh, number of tasks, contributors, images you can upload, or anything else uh, for that matter, except custom branding, which is only available for the purchasing duck plan for $49 per month. And then, we, of course, we have uh, support, and you can you, you get your 30-day uh, free trial. We also have enterprise plan, which uh, comes with white labeling again, uh, and also ability to, to host track deck in your own servers behind your own firewall. And uh, additionally, we can also provide some development services for custom integrations uh, or something else uh, that you would need in track deck specifically for your big organization if you have some very uh, specific needs. Uh, also, we also try to help other startups. So if you're early stage startup, uh, just ping us about what you're doing uh, in, in, in contact section. Uh, and uh, we'd be more than happy to give you six months for free. Uh, we've all been there. And we try to uh, help out as much as we can. Um, so that's that's uh, uh, pricing plans. And if you go uh, to back to app, uh, next to your account settings, we have a billing section. And here you can see, uh, again, the like summary of all the plans and how much we cost. And uh, so all the plans here are set to annual subscription. You can simply check this box and then you'll have um, uh, the monthly subscription options uh, and just uh, choose which one you want to buy. And I have also enterprise one of the enterprise solutions uh, enabled from uh, for me here. So if you're interested in something like this, the specific settings, uh, again, just let us know. Uh, and then it's pretty straightforward uh, if you want to purchase it. Uh, and we also have coupons, which uh, all of you watching and who have registered will get a 20. Um, 25% uh, discount coupon uh, for six months in your email straight after uh, this webinar. Right, so uh, I basically have covered more or less all the uh, main functionality we have. Um, and now let's see if I got any questions. All right, no questions. So I must be doing something good here. Um, I guess uh, the last thing that I I want to leave you is how easy uh, it is to set up track deck in any uh, website and how easy it is to add new projects. So you don't have to click on add new projects here and, and, and go through a whole setup thing. Uh, but you can do that, of course, if you want to and choose if you want to start an image or some website. But I really like just going to a website. Um, just going to a website and having this ability to start working on it or, or leaving feedback uh, straight away. And uh, sharing it with uh, your teammates. Right, so I, th I think I'm more or less done since I'm not getting any questions in the, uh, in the webinar app. I guess we can uh, call this a day. Let's see if there's any questions in the uh, webinar page. No, no questions. All right, folks, uh, Folks, uh, I think um, I covered more or less everything uh, in this webinar. And we're going to be having them more often. We're going to have another one, better one, uh, with uh, uh, new updates and features um, in a week. And again, there's going to be a discount. And uh, if you have any questions, drop us an email, drop us a message in Intercom app uh, or here in Google Plus. And we're always more than happy to get feedback from you and answer. Thank you. And bye bye.